Hello, everybody. Today we want to talk to you a little bit about why the conventional approach to treating hypothyroidism does not work. We have to really look at this. We have to really question what is going on, right? Because it doesn't matter if you have high TSH or low TSH, right? They use hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism right there. That's a very inefficient way of looking at the body. That'd be like taking your tire pressure and saying, you need a new engine. Just doesn't make sense. doesn't matter if you have high T4, low T4, high T3, low T3. It doesn't matter. The, the, the recommendation is exactly the same for everyone across the board, even with the Hashimoto's. What is it? Here's your T4, right? Here's your Levo or your Synthroid. Or here's your T4, T3 mix, right? Your MP thyroid, armor, etc. We have to question that. What, what is going on? You were doing all this work. Well, the problem is they're not even looking at who you are and what your story is. And that's the second thing. If we live in chaos, we've had trauma. We've been maybe physically abused, mentally abused. Maybe we dieted. Maybe we overtrained. Um, Over time, it weakens, which it weakens your level of resiliency and kind of adapts your system into a stressed physiology. So, so often we consider where we think about stress or correlate stress to things like lifestyle and most definitely finances, kids, work, so on relationships, but we don't often take into consideration the effects of physiological right. stress on the system and the impact that that has. And that's an important piece I want to touch upon in a second, but it's like, if we go into the doctor, we've had this chronic stress, our story for the past 10, 20, 30, 40 years, and they give us medication, how can we truly think that's going to work when nothing in our life that has led us here is going, is, has changed? And we always say the only way you can heal is to create change, right? So that's the second thing we have to look at. But what Jeannie said isn't boring because this is about inflammation. What is inflammation? What is stress? It's not a thing, right? Because I could say moving stresses me out, and it does, but it doesn't really stress her out, right? It's our moving our home, not yeah. moving our body. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a physiological reaction. It's what's happening inside. So we look at what inflammation is. A lot of people say, "Well, I'm taking curcumin to help all these different things. I'm taking NSAIDs." Well, it doesn't do anything because inflammation really is what your cells doing. So your cells, in a simple sense, either producing energy, which is ATP right back to high school or college. That's energy that puts money in the bank or you're producing inflammation, right? You're producing pro-oxidants. You're producing interleukin, cytokines, tons of inflammation, which leads to calcification over time. That is what inflammation is. And our RTM method is really based on how do we use food strategically for that person to restore metabolic health so we can get the cells to produce energy again to, to create a pro-metabolic healing environment versus inflammatory environment. So that's how you reduce inflammation. So one of the very first ways that inflammation can affect the thyroid is through the HPA axis. That's your hypothalamic pituitary adrenal. And we may go as far, and we will go as far as saying thyroid gut axis. There was a lot of research done, and one study showed that when they induced inflammation and they injected cytokines, you saw a reduction or an increase, I should say, in TSH and a reduction in free T3 and free T4, right? So they showed, and I just mentioned earlier, that when your cells are not producing energy, they produce interleukin and cytokines. That is inflammation. And what that does is it gives you the illusion that you have hypothyroidism. It's cause and effect, though. What's the cause? Inflammation. What's the effect? Altered lab values. There's really not a thyroid problem here is, there's inflammation creating the illusion that there's a thyroid problem. So if we begin over time to regulate how your cells work, we create this pro or antioxidant environment, pro healing environment, we reduce inflammation and you see your lab values regulate. The second way inflammation affects the state of your thyroid is in decreasing the number and sensitivity to thyroid hormone receptors. This is important, just like the first one. If you're inflamed and you take thyroid medication, what's it gonna do? Nothing. With this one, when you're inflamed and there's a decreased number of receptors and the sensitivity of decreases, you can take all the thyroid hormone you want. It's like knocking on the door, but no one's going to respond, right? So in this instance, it's another example of a thyroid medication isn't gonna heal you if your house is on fire, right? I always tell people, it's like, your house is on fire, but you're trying to move furniture in. It's not going to work. 
you have to reduce the inflammation first, let the dust settle and dust settle and then say, okay, what is really going on? Right. And that is inflammation in the system, creating illusion of a thyroid issue. And last, but most definitely not least is the inability for the body to be able to take this T4 and convert it to T3 or even the impact of T3 on a system that is severely inflamed or again, locked in that stress physiology. This is probably the most common yeah. because doctors will say you have low T3. That's your active thyroid hormone. They say, well, let me just give you T4 because if we give you the inactive form, you're going to convert it. That's not the case because usually these people are highly inflamed, tons of cortisol, tons of cytokines, tons of interleukins. We could just say stress and inflammation. The problem is it's been shown that stress, ACTH, all these things affect our hormone conversion. So now what you're seeing is you're not converting because there's stress in the system, there's loss of minerals, all these things and loss of glycogen that you need to make this conversion. There's a blocking factor. You could take all the medication you want, it's not gonna be converted to the other side because there's chronic stress and inflammation in the system. And this is, like I said, probably the most common we wanna step back because like Jeannie just said, if you're in this state, and you've probably maybe felt this before and you take that medication, sometimes it just revs you up and makes you feel worse and you get tons of anxiety and elevated heart rate. Right. And we also want to kind of just touch back on that stress, the, the effect of that stress physiology really kind of eating up, for lack of a better term, or wasting those glycogen reserves that we may have on board. So again, there is there the resources are not available within the liver where most of that conversion is taking place to support that conversion. Right. And this is where, again, food frequency, metabolic carbohydrates, that balance of, of nutrition can really support, again, reducing that inflammation, giving the body what it needs, but also supporting those conversions for those of you who are on thyroid medication. So once again, hopefully what we're saying here starts to click because a lot of us don't feel good. Our labs are off. Doctors are functional medicine. Doctors say you need this. We have to take a step back and really do the research and find what's going on with us because unfortunately, not to say they don't care, they just don't have the time, right? So you have to become educated and know what's going on to say, what else can I do? What else can I change over the next three to six or eight or 12 months to maybe not have to go on the medication, right? So I, so, you know, I can reduce inflammation to get myself on the right path. Now, we want to say we're not doctors. We're not saying to take it or not. There are some people we work with using our RTM method. It still works great for them, and they do need it. And that is okay. There's nothing wrong with needing the medication, but we see too many people too many times put on it when they don't really need it. And even if they are on it, and they need to take it, very often the foundation is still not right. there to support the thyroid medication, which results in constantly having to adjust thyroid medication or again, um, continuing to feel those symptoms, not really feeling better on the medication. So hopefully you're able to connect some dots, dots and it relates to you. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us. We'll see you next time.